Hi everybody, it's Sally here. Um, today we are going to be talking about the LC2 lace carriage, which goes on the Silver Reed 24 stitch punch card machines from the model 360 onwards. Um, Silver Reed, obviously also known uh, elsewhere as Singer, a studio, and formerly it was called Knitmaster and Empire's all. I've been around a long time, so I tend to call mine a Knitmaster the whole time. To, when I say Knitmaster, I basically mean Silver Reed, and it fits all of those uh, machines that have those brand names on. Right. Ooh. The lovely LC2 lace carriage. What an absolutely brilliant gadget this is. Um, when you get your LC2, it comes in its original box. You'll find inside you've got um, some claw weights, some really big chunky lace weights, um, some punch cards, a little bag that contains these things which are called the edge pins and your lace carriage. Now the lace carriage uses the drum patterning mechanism uh, like the main carriage on the silver reed and it should, the drums should spin freely on it. Um, if they don't you're going to need to clean it. Um, if, it, if they're moving, which is a little bit stiff, they might ease off with uh, a bit of heat with a hairdryer and a little bit of oil applied. But they should be spinning freely as on your main carriage uh, for the patterning to work. And with the LC2 lace carriage, um, this can knit and transfer. Uh, it can do both things. So you don't have two separate carriages to knit lace on here. So you don't need extension rails on the side or anything like that. The one carriage does the whole thing. And you take it out of its box and put it on the back rail of your machine in place of the main carriage, which you can take off and put on one side because you can do plain stocking stitch with the, the, the knit, with the lace carriage as well. So I'll take my main carriage off. Put it on the floor and um, just we'll just be working with a lace carriage for now. Right, um, with your lace carriage, you should have got a set of 10 punch cards, uh, but you also notice that there's no instruction book in the box. Um, the instructions for using the lace carriage because it was designed as an, an accessory and sold as a package with the main machine. Um, the instructions for them are usually at the back of the main instruction manuals. This is mine for my SK280 and uh, contents list right at the back. It says instructions for optional lace carriage there at the back of page 82. There isn't an in a separate instruction leaflet for the lace carriages. Um, so if you haven't got one, um, go and download free from the internet either um, the SK280 instruction book or the one for the 700 because uh, it's in there as well. And, uh, and then up at the back there, it's got instructions for lace carriage. And uh, mine also had a nice little coloured leaflet that tells me what all the different punch card patterns will do. And on the back, it tells me what the lace patterns will do. So I've got my... Uh, And lace cards here and uh, with lace you can pretty much see from the picture what it's going to do I and mean, that's card L1 so it's making a nice like diamond pattern on the on the card there and if you have a look at what card L1 does lo and behold it makes little diamond patterns and card number three is zigzaggies and there we go, that's what card three does. Um, there's also a bit of a misconception that um, Knitmaster lace carriages always transfer and knit in the one pass. Yes, they certainly do do that. Um, on, and that's what they call plain lace knitting, where it makes the transfers and the knitting all in the same pass of the carriage. But it can also do types of lace where you transfer all the stitches first and then knit them off and that's what Knitmaster referred to as fashion lace so this carriage can actually do both kinds of lace knitting but you still only need the one carriage to perform that so um, 
just be aware that there are two types of lace and therefore two types of card. And it's very easy to spot which is which because if I put down a fashion lace card and then a plain lace card, the very obvious difference is that the fashion lace one has got these solid bars of red up the right hand side which indicate the points on the pattern at which you are going to transfer only and not knit. Um, so there's different carriage settings for that, but that's how to spot which cards do which. If there's no bars up the side, it's knitting and transferring all in one go, and that's called plain lace. If there are red bars up the side, you transfer and then knit separately, and that is fashion lace. Um, yeah, you've got 10 patterns as in the original set. Um, you can turn some of these over. You might have an A and a B side. Um, but not with the fashion lace. If you turn that one over, you know, there's nothing on the back of it. But uh, there is on the front. But the plain lace, most of them, I think you, you've got an A and a B side. But you can't turn them upside down. There's no numbering up the other side. Other than that, they work in exactly the same way as any other punch card on the silver reed machine. Um, your um, pattern reader reads five rows down into the mechanism so number one is five rows up on the right hand side that indicates that the first row is then ready to be read in the pattern reader um, you can obviously t uh, roll them around and join them with a clip so that they can continuously rotate to, to, knit, uh, to, to knit lace up the full length of a garment or a scarf or something like that um, but yeah, other than that, they work as any other 24 stitch punch card does. And then these arrows on the right are directional arrows for your carriage. So that when you're on row one, you know that you should be knitting from right to left. And when you're on row two, you're going back the other way. Um, I don't think there's anything else to be said about the cards themselves. Put them over there for a minute. Um, Knitmaster also back in the day produced some additional sets of cards um, the card sets 62 63 64 and 65 um, I don't know if they still make them um, we could check with one of the silver reed dealers like Andrea or Andy Nitz whether they still make them or whether they're only available second hand uh, in which case a dealer might have some or else I found mine on eBay Good old eBay. Um, this set, as you can probably see, it's a bit yellowed and a bit ancient, but you know the card is in perfectly good condition. And again, scanning through, it's very easy. When I get to the back to see which ones are fashion lace, because of those red lumps up the side. So I've got three fashion lace and seven plain lace in there. Oops. And for those of you familiar with the way Knitmaster lay out their pattern knitting instructions or, or the river instructions, um, they make use of an operating table to uh, tell you how to load up the card and prepare the machine for, for knitting. Um, I'll just have a quick scan through the contents thing at the front. That just confirms what should be in the box with the carriage. Um, the yarn and stitch dial. It, uses much the same types of yarn that the standard gauge machine uses two ply up to four ply that's the uk two ply to four ply four ply being around about a fingering or a sock weight yarn um i haven't tried anything thicker than that some thicker four plies also seem to be a bit of a struggle uh, but you know never say never with these machines it really comes down to trial and error a lot of the time as to whether it will or won't knit it and the lace carriage is a bit more finickety than the uh, standard gauge machine, the regular carriage. So, um, yeah, you might have to just try it and see. I think definitely should be avoided anything that's got lumps in it, like or slubs like greenier yarn that's knobby, because um, that definitely will be a struggle for the, the carriage to transfer those stitches from one needle to another. Uh, and anything hairy, very hairy like mohair, 
um, it might also find a bit problematic. Um, if you have your ribber attached, um, they recommend that you bring the knitting in front of the ribber. So either put ribber covers on if you've got them or cover it with a pillowcase and let the knitting hang down in front rather than in between. Um, I've got my ribber on, but I've also got my tilt table lowered so the, the main bed's down quite a bit. But I will pull the knitting in front of the ribber. Um, cast on the knitting. We'll do that in a minute when I do the demonstration. Uh, you don't think you should have the fine knit bar on here. I seem to remember to say take that out somewhere. No, oh, yes, if you knit with a rib with a ribber connected, make sure you take the close knit bar out from the needle bed if it's in use. So no fine knit or close knit bar in there. Uh, I think that's about it. Um, in terms of the carriage control itself, um, there are no rustle levers on these carriages. That's because you should never put the needles to C or D position when you've got the lace arm attached. You should never put the main carriage sinker plate on here or the river connect arm or the weaving arm or anything like that. If you're using the lace carriage, lace carriage and lace sinker only. And the, the cardinal thing to remember is do not put the needles forward, so not putting them out to out to here to hold in position, because you'll either break the needle or break the carriage. Um, uh, it's got side levers which have the same function as with the normal carriage, i.e. it tells the carriage when to pattern or when to knit plain stockinette. There's only two settings on the cam dial, the uh, setting at what I call six o'clock here is for plain lace or stockinette and then this one is for when you do fashion lace now I don't know if you can see that on, on here this is there's a little road trip road counter tripper at the back here that as you go back and forwards counts the rows when you're doing the fashion lace you obviously only want your row counter to trip when it's actually knitting so when you set the carriage to do the transfer bit only it disengages this row tripper at the back and um, so that it doesn't count the rows. It will only count the rows you actually knit, not the rows that are going through the pattern card reader, which is quite nifty. Um, I don't think I need to, to do anything else. Um, I'll just start and cast on with some white four-ply yarn I've got here. I'm just going to do an open cast on. Um, if you want to do any other type of cast on or ribbing or anything like that, obviously you can do that and do it all, transfer it to the main bed and then transfer over to your lace carriage. But for a, a little practice like this, you can do an open cast on on the carriage bed. If the uh, yarn feeder bit here is not in the right place, you just have to shift the carriage around until it gets into the place where you can load the yarn up. And then... Throw that on the floor, and to do plain stock in that, I'm not going to put the punch card in just yet. Um, I've got my side levers forward, um, and I shall just put about let's do 80 stitches into work, 40 either side of naught. Um, of course, there's my first mistake. I am so ingrained at putting my needles out to D position to cast on that I just do it automatically. But no, I'm going to push those back to B, otherwise I shall have a nasty mess. Right, push those back to B and knit across. So I've got my tension dial on seven because this is a four ply yarn. Um, everything else is okay. And now I'm just going to use ravel cord to hold those open loops in place. And knit back. After about three rows, pull the ravel cord out and then knit a few more until there's enough knitting there to hang weights. Uh, 
I'll just put some claw weights on for now. Add the big heavy weights in later. And they do recommend that you have a good length of waist knitting before you switch over to the lace carriage, um, simply so that you can get it well weighted. So I'll knit about 20, 20 or more rows for a minute. Of course, it is perfectly possible for you to cast on and knit those in waste yarn uh, before casting on your main lace project. So um, let's put some big claw weights on here. And I've brought the knitting in front of the river. So now we're ready to try a lace pattern. So, um, let's get L1, one of the plain lace ones, and feed it into the card reader. Together with the front going over the back. Whilst I remember, I should just point out that um, the lace carriage um, was only introduced for the model 360 machine onwards or the 260 version of it, which is the same as the 360 but without the knit radar in it, I believe. Um, these machines have got different needles to the earlier models. If you've got a 321 or a 323, 326, one of those, um, you will not be able to use the lace carriage on those machines unless you replace every single needle. Um, I have heard people that have people have done that successfully. I have also heard people say that the earlier machines, the dimensions of the knitting bed are not exactly the same as the later ones but I have not got any technical verification for that um, so it's up to you if you want to spend a lot of money on replacing all 200 needles to try out a lace carriage on an earlier model be my guest but I make no guarantees about whether it will or won't work um, and these lace carriages obviously work on the later models the 360 or 260 the 700 or 600, which is the same again, but without the knit radar in it. The Zippy Plus machine, which then became the SK280. So those I know will be okay with the uh, LC2 lace carriage. Or the earlier version, which was the, the 360 lace carriage, which came out with the 360 machine at the time. So there we go. Uh, I'd say that before I forget. Now, um, card is in, I turn it to row one and lock it and then I need to make at least one if not two passes of the carriage to um, read the pattern into the memory drums at the back. So that's done. I now push the side levers back so that it will now start instructing the carriage to knit the pattern that's memorised into the drums and release the card. Um, and the other thing I need to do is to put these little edge pins on the carriage. These stop the last two needles on each side from knitting in lace pattern. Oops, I've only got one out. And they literally slide in the carriage between the last two needles like that. Let's see, see what I'm doing. Can't see the right hand side, but I need that. I like that for you. I'm just going to put the other one on the other end in exactly the same way. Go. 
and then it's ready to knit lace and I just leave the cam set on the stockinette position um, it's going to start patterning because I've pushed those side levers back and I've got a pattern memorised into the drums all I need to do um, reset my row counter to naught and start knitting lace Periodically, you need to move the weights up. And that's all there is to it. The most amazing thing. Right, uh, we'll just have a little look at increasing and decreasing, which I'll show you. You can do this on either side of the carriage. I'll obviously show it on this side because that's the bit that you can see. If I wanted to decrease, take the edge pins off and just literally move the needle in. Okay. And then put the edge pin back, making sure it's on the last two stitches and carry on knitting. I did that first one with the two prong transfer too, tool. You could do it with the one prong as well. Just transfer the stitch in, move the edge pin in and carry on knitting. And likewise, if you wish to increase, um, you can use the two prong tool and move it out. And then pick up the heel stitch as you would normally do for an increase. Put your edge pin back in. You can literally pull a needle forward into working position as you would normally do. Um, you need to put the edge pin out, make sure it's going to knit. Finally, you can just do move one knee stitch out with your transfer tool and pick up the heel stitch and put your edge pin back in. And just move those weights up. go back to ordinary stockinette knitting I'll take the edge pins off all I need to do is to lock my card and put the side levers forward and then that will tell the carriage to stop patterning and I could go back to knitting stockinette simple as that Okay, so that is how you do plain lace, which is knit and transfer all in the same pass. Um, to do fashion lace, it involves changing the carriage settings. So, um, put in card 10. to row one and lock it and read the pattern in. 
So now I'm going to release the card, put the side levers back and start knitting. I'm only going to do two rows. Right, I'll move that so that you can see it, see what's happening on the card reader. Um, the first two rows have not got the red bar beside, so I'm going to knit two rows. Now I'll come to row three where the red bar starts. That indicates to me that I'm now going to do transfers. So what I have to do is to change the cam lever to the fashion lace setting on here. Let's disengage the row counter at the back and I have to take the yarn out. Now I just take it out and I can just hold it in front of me. If I didn't want to hold it, I keep a peg and I just literally peg it to the front of whatever I'm wearing so that I don't have to hang on to it. And then I'm just going to move the carriage across according to the number of rows that's on the, the card reader. Okay, let's put that back there so you can see it's just happening. But um, the I've done, let's reset the row counter, I've knitted two rows on pattern so now onto pattern three but this will not advance whilst the knitting is not actually being knitted it's just doing transfers oops I've lost a stitch on the edge here it's because I forgot to put my edge pins back in so it's trying to transfer something that's not there put edge pins back in Okay, so now I'm at, back at the point on the card where there's no red bar, so I know it needs to knit. So refeed the yarn back into the feeder, set the carriage back to knit, and knit the two rows. Now it's going to transfer again, so I take the yarn out, set the carriage, and do my transfers. Oops. Back to the point where I'm going to knit again, reset the carriage to knit, insert the yarn and knit two rows. So now although the row count on here says row 21, I've actually only done six rows of knitting so my yarn counter says six rows and that's all I've done there is the six rows of lace pattern. So take it out again. You just watch these red bars on the side of the punch card and it tells you when you're going to do transfer and when you're going to do knitting. So four rows of transfer. Two rows of knitting. Two rows of transfer. Two rows of knitting. Eight rows of transfer. Move the weights up. And two rows of knitting. Six rows of transfer. And two rows of knitting. of transfer two 
two rows of knitting. Two rows of transfer. And then I'm back to row one again. Literally two rows of knitting. So um, that's completed one full rotation of the cord. So I've gone around actually 60 rows of cord, but it's only done 16 rows of actual knitting. Um, so if I lock the cord now, set that back to stockinette, take the side levers off and just carry on knitting plain. You can see there the two different types of uh, knitting capable of being done by this lace carriage. So there's your fashion lace at the top there, which is transferring and knitting separately. And that's plain lace at the bottom, which transfers and knits all in one go. So I'll, just cut this off. I'll do a few more rows here. And then to take off the machine, same way as normal, cut the yarn, take it out the feeder, and just knit across and it'll drop off. Oh, it's sounding loopy. So that's the plain lace, your nice diamond pattern, and that's the slightly more complex uh, fashion lace, which is transfer and knit separately. All right, so I hope this has answered a few of your questions about how. The LC2 lace carriage operates. Um, if not, then just stick a few questions up on the on the page, and I'll try and help you as per normal. Thank you very much.